This is Auschwitz. It's in the Eastern European country of Poland. During World War II, from 1942 to 1944, more than one million innocent men, women, and children died here in what is known as the Holocaust. Most victims were herded into gas chambers and killed, while others died of disease and starvation. 90% of them were Jewish. Overall, 6 million Jews were killed during the war. The so-called Final Solution, initiated by Adolf Hitler and the Nazis. In the history of the world, it is the most devastating genocide, a deliberate and systematic attempt to destroy an entire ethnic, racial, religious, or national group. I'm here in Montebello, where a monument stands to the victims of another government planned mass killing, the Armenian Genocide. From 1915 to 1923, more than 1.5 million Armenians were shot, stabbed, or starved to death at the hands of the government of Turkey. Many died during death marches in the desert. This is my great-grandfather Penyamin in the late 1950s. He survived the Armenian Genocide and ended up in Wisconsin. His two brothers and mother also survived. His father and five sisters were not so lucky. My great-grandfather was forced to leave the land his ancestors had lived on for a thousand years, never to see it again. The reason? He was an Armenian Christian. This is my great-grandfather, Lajos. He was a Hungarian Catholic. After World War II, he spent five years in a forced labor camp in Siberia. It was all part of Joseph Stalin's plan to build up the Soviet Union. More than 700,000 Hungarians were sent to the labor camps. Nearly half of them died there. It's for these reasons, the experiences of my great-grandfathers, that I have a keen interest in how and why human beings can treat each other so badly. There seems to be no shortage of historical evidence shining a light on man's inhumanity to man. My father has taken me to demonstrations where protesters demand the government of Turkey recognize the Armenian Genocide. Mr. Kokorian, what what do you have to say today? For the last two years, when I was five and six, I had the opportunity to report on these annual protests, giving me more insight into the complicated political nature of the crime of genocide. A few years ago, I met Peter Fischel. Like my mother, he's from Hungary. He survived the Holocaust by hiding in a church, a bakery, and in a basement all the while carrying a fake ID. He's what they call a hidden child of the Holocaust. You know something? Heaven knows. Maybe, maybe this is where my sister and my bed was. You know, I really don't know exactly. It's not 50 years that we were here. It's 60 some years. I have to live with all these horrors what happened. I have to live, and this is what nobody can escape. Peter Fischel was just 14 when he spent four months hiding from the Nazis. His father did not survive, leaving Peter, his mother and sister, heartbroken. They eventually came to America, where Peter saw this famous picture in a magazine. He identified with the boy in the picture and wrote a poem about it called to the little Polish boy standing with his arms up. To the little Polish boy standing with his arms up. 
I would like to be an artist so I could make a painting of you, little Polish boy, standing with your little hat on your head, the star of David on your coat, standing in the ghetto with your arms up, as many Nazi machine guns pointing at you. I would make a monument of you and the world who said nothing. I would like to be a composer so I could write a concerto of you, little Polish boy. Standing with your little hat on your head, the star of David on your coat. Standing in the ghetto with your arms up, as many Nazi machine guns pointing at you. I would write a concerto of you and the world who said nothing. I am not an artist, but my mind had painted a painting of you. Ten million miles high is the painting, so the whole universe can see you now, little Polish boy. Standing with your little hat on your head, the star of David on your coat. Standing in the ghetto with your arms up, as many Nazi machine guns pointing at you, and the world who said nothing. I will make this painting so bright that it will blind the eyes of the world who saw nothing. Ten billion miles high will be the monument so the whole universe can remember of you little Polish boy. Standing with your little hat on your head, the star of David on your coat, standing in the ghetto with your arms up, as many Nazi machine guns pointing at you. And the monument will tremble, so the blind world now will know what fear is in the darkness. The world who said nothing. I am not a composer, but I will write a composition for five trillion trumpets, so it will blast the eardrums of this world. The words who heard nothing. I am sorry that it was you and not me. Since 1995, Peter Fischel has used the poem to introduce the Holocaust to middle and high school students across the country, speaking in more than 100 schools. My sister gave me this yellow star. She saved this. I don't know where my yellow star is, and I don't really miss it. And uh, <laughs> in my poem, I say that and the world can find out now what is fear in darkness. I experienced it as a child. That came from an experience of mine that I was hiding in an apartment, but I was the only person in that apartment. When the Germans came in, I was on the street, and I actually saw the Germans marching in. And I ran home and I told my father, I said, Dad, the Germans just came in. I saw them on the streets. Do you think it's possible that all of us are going to be killed now? And he looked in my eyes and he said, yes. Unfortunately, in the 70 years since the Holocaust, mass killings and genocides persist to this day, leading Mr. Fischl to Arizona to talk to a group of children and adults holding a candlelight vigil to bring attention to the modern-day genocide in the Darfur region of Africa. I wrote a poem about a world of human beings who ignored a Holocaust of six million people a genocide 65 years ago, 
and unfortunately the poem is all too appropriate for what has since happened in Cambodia, in Rwanda, in Kosovo, or as is the case today in Darfur. A few years ago, Peter was the guest of honor at a high school in Chino Hills, where some kids put on a play based on the novel Playing for Time, written by a survivor of the Auschwitz death camp. She survived because she and a few other classical musicians were not killed by their Nazi captors because they performed for them. As a Holocaust survivor, it was an extra special event for me watching this play with this unbelievable, extraordinary cast. A couple of years later, Peter was stunned to read about a fourth grade girl from Fountain Valley who had dressed up like the little Polish boy and performed Peter's poem at school. He paid a visit to her class to thank her for keeping alive the memory of the Holocaust and the little Polish boy. His poem is being used not just to teach about the Holocaust, but to teach about tolerance in modern day, race, how people look, and religion. You see, Peter is a Holocaust survivor. His father was killed by the Nazis when he was only 14 years old. For his efforts, Peter received the Hero in Education Award from the California Lottery. He's created posters, a medallion, and a book, and commissioned a lesson plan on how to teach the Holocaust to middle and high school students. Thank you so much for sharing Thank this you. with us. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Ladies you and gentlemen, so Peter Fischel, our volunteer hero in education. Thank you so much. Peter Fischel is most proud of his display at the Museum of Tolerance in Los Angeles. He often speaks at the museum and has his picture on the wall, showcasing his fellow Holocaust survivors who volunteer their time there. What uh, Peter is doing is not only remarkable because of the courage that a person has to every day relive a tragic part of his life. When a survivor does that, they ensure the continuity of human civilization based on tolerance because they tell the world, look where inhumanity has led us in the past. Why is a child dangerous? Because a child is the embodiment of the future. And Peter, what you've done in enhancing this with your poetry, your own contribution, is to see it through the eyes of one who experienced that powerlessness of one who experienced that victimization and one who understands that the photograph is a plea for human decency and human dignity. In March of 2012, I had the opportunity to sit down with Peter Fischel next to his display on the fourth floor of the Museum of Tolerance. We've heard the expression never again, but these terrible things keep happening. What is it in human beings that lead them to do this? People looking for scapegoats to put the blame on somebody. The people who would follow them, the factor is fear. And people follow orders because they are afraid that they're going to be the first one shot to death. What do world leaders and everybody else for that matter need to do to prevent genocide from happening in the future? The world leaders definitely should make it sure that in the education they have included the genocide and the holocaust and teach it to the children. There's no doubt the world has been and will continue to be a dangerous place. Some still view the future with hope others with a stark realism. We live in a world where Ahmadinejad says that the Holocaust, what Peter is talking about, is a lie. It's a myth. It never happened. And that's why what Peter does is invaluable. What he's doing is not 
doing something for the past. You, we can't undo the past. It's, it's already happened. But what he's doing is protecting the future. Since you survived the Holocaust 67 years ago, do you think the world has made any progress towards stopping massacres and genocides? Yes. In my personal opinion, that is progress. The most important thing is that we're talking about it. We do not turn our head. When you go down to the museum on the first floor and look my picture, I'm stating, never turn your head. That's very important. If you don't, not gonna get involved and you're gonna turn ahead, things not gonna go away. You have to do something and stop the insanity.